M Gaming for DaVinci Resolve is finally here. And this pack is perfect to boost your creative inventory with some incredible tools that are going to help take your gaming edits to the next level. So let's dive into it. So to gain access to all of the assets inside the M Gaming pack, you want to head up to the Effects tab, make sure the toolbox is selected and search M Gaming. Here you're going to find 60 titles, 34 effects and 10 different transitions. They all work in a drag and drop basis, whether that's dragging the title onto the timeline or in effects directly onto your clip. And diving into this pack as a general overview, we have 11 different sections. We have the frames to placeholders, which is everything under the effects tab. We have the add-ons to typography, which is everything under titles. And lastly, the end gaming pack here are all of the transitions. So we're going to get started inside the titles. And once you understand these, everything else in this pack will be super easy to use. And I'll kick things off with the controller title inside the add-ons pack. We can see by default, we have a mouse that animates into the screen. Pretty simple and ready to go, to be honest, but let's have a deeper dive in. So first things first, if you're working in a 4K timeline, you're going to want to hit this box, which ensures that the quality and sizing is correct. Now we'll head further up where we have these in and out points. These boxes allow us to switch on or off the animation when the layer starts. And the first title we have, which is pretty much going to be in every title we cover, is the content controls tab. This is the overarching control center where you'll manipulate how the graphical effect looks. So that's moving the position, the size and the rotation. And for a general rule of thumb, if you do make a change and you want to reset it back to the default, you can just double click on the option name and it will snap back to how it was originally made. So what I'll do is actually make this mouse a little bit bigger so it fills up more of the screen. Next, we're going to move on to the icons and global controls. Now, at this point is where the titles will start to differ. Everything between the content controls tab and the drop shadow controls will differ depending on the title you use. So in this controller title, we have these four different tabs. However, if I was to take this arrow at the top, click onto that, you can see all we have to control is just the arrow. So it will depend on which title you're using, but most of them operate in a very similar way. The icons glow control is where you will actually control the main setting of this title. So here we can swap it into things like a controller, VR headset, steering wheel, and many more. Then we can manipulate the thickness of the lines as well as the colors, the detailing. And lastly, we actually have the scale animation. Now this controls when the layer animates in, if we want it to start big and get smaller. Just remember if you do take the scale animation off and you have adjusted the size, you may need to readjust that as now it's going to stay the same size as what it was when it first animates in. And these next two tabs will potentially be useless to you depending on which icon you choose. Currently we have the gamepad selected, which means when we go to the keyboard icon controls, nothing we change here is going to affect the gamepad because this is only for the keyboard. If I make this F, you're going to see nothing's changed. However, if I now go to the global icons and go to the keyboard, you're going to see we have F up here. So that's what these are going to affect. Unless you have the keyboard or the VR icon selected, you won't see any differences made to these. If I change this to JC, again, you're not seeing anything. But if I change this to VR here, now you're going to see JC in the middle. Then we have the glow controls, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just gives the title a glow. You can control the size of the glow, the look of the glow, or just turn it off. And lastly, we have a drop shadow. This is gonna help your title stand out when it's on a brighter background. Now, most of these add-ons are going to work in a very similar way. They're all quite simple and very easy to adjust. However, there are a few that do require a little bit extra work. So for example, the M gaming logo here, if I get rid of this, you're gonna see this animates in and has a section for your logo. Now, this is a place where you can actually put your own logo or another graphic. And to do that, very simple. All you wanna do is go to logo controls, hit browse, go through your files and select your logo. Alternatively, if you don't want to put a logo, you can just put text here. So we currently have M Gaming here and you can see that animates in, in a very easy, clean way. And this works the exact same way as the sponsors title where you have the five different options to put in the different logos. If you're so unlucky enough to have five different sponsors. Next is the background section. And this is a great place to have some interest behind your text or what we'll get onto later, having framed videos. They just elevate your sequence that much more so you don't have to play in back background and make stacking these effects really cool. You'll be able to manipulate them in a very similar way to what we just did previously in the add-ons. But the main thing to note, if you're wondering why playback is quite slow in viewing some of these, that will be because in the settings, a lot of them have either noise or grain. Those are both pretty taxing on your device, so I would actually turn them off until you get to the end of the edit. As you can see, I currently have M Gaming Modern on and it's very choppy. You can see we're getting less than five frames per second playback. However, if I was to go to the grain controls and turn that off, restart that, you can see we're absolutely perfect getting the full 24 frames per second. So just something to bear in mind unless you have a super powerful machine. There are two types of backgrounds here. We have the full screen background, which is everything from the grid to the wall. And then these bar backgrounds is actually just backgrounds with text. So I can put these here and it's not gonna fill the entire screen, but if I was to put footage under this layer, 
you can see it adds a bird section perfect for text. So if you want to put a caption or a title on this, you could put this under to make sure it stands out. Now we have the first overlay effect section of the pack, which is as simple as it sounds. We'll literally drag on your effect and you're good to go. So whether that's adding a frame to your footage and you can just change the color quite easily, or you want to illustrate that the person is hitting their keyboard so hard that smoke is appearing. Probably not realistic, but you have the option. And just like before, we'll head to the inspector tab so we can dial in how we want it. Now, I wouldn't want the defocus effect here, so I'll actually just uncheck this, make sure this quality box is on, and I would just dial back the smoke just so it's a little bit more subtle. You know, you don't see it as much. Go really dial that strength down. The contrast, I'd also dial that down just so you can't see it as much. As for me, this is kind of a case where less is more, you know, just a little bit of smoke makes it seem a little bit more realistic as opposed to when the whole screen is filled with it. And this will be the exact same with all the other overlay effects. The three titles inside the stats section just gives you a great way to show different stats in the game. So we have a KD ratio, we have an overall game rating and a cool versus title, which is something I'm gonna use later on in this video as this is a great way to stack some effects, but I'll get onto that shortly which leaves us with the last section inside the titles pack, which is the typography. Now these are just various tools to really add to your edits. Maybe you have a head-to-head -head gaming competition with multiple people. So here you use the juxtaposition as you can select different teams and put in each player's name. Or you want a title card to show the winner of the competition, or well, I'd use title 04, set that to 4K, and I would just change the titles and the logos. Since you already know how to use them, I will just toggle them off for now. And there I have it, team one has the victory. So enjoy the simplicity of the title section because the effects tab is where it starts to get interesting. The first thing to note though is that these effects no longer have their own layer. So as you can see, if I drag frame one onto the timeline, it doesn't do anything. I actually have to drag it onto my footage. But how I recommend using these is actually with an adjustment layer. So if I close out the M-game search, I can just drag that adjustment layer onto the clip. This is gonna ensure that when you apply the effect, as long as you adjust the adjustment layer from the end on the right side, you won't have the effect break. And so you can visualize what I mean by the effect breaking. If I was to drag frame one onto this clip, we can see it animates in absolutely fine, no problems. However, if I was to change the length of this clip from the beginning, and then I drag this effect on, you can see it no longer animates into the clip. That's because when you put the effect on, it's using the timing from the full length of the clip. So if I go all the way back, now we'll see it animates in. So if you only wanna use a certain select of the clip, you know, maybe you have your own in and out points, that is why I recommend using an adjustment layer because it doesn't matter where you put that adjustment clip, it will always fully animate in and the effects will work properly. Just remember to always modify the time from the end of the adjustment clip. Now we have that cleared up, let's actually dive into these frames. So these are cool ways to literally frame your images. So as you can see, we have this streamer inside this section. Now it's kind of cutting off half his head and we have a little bit of negative space here. So what I'll do is in the effects tab, I'll go to the media controls and I'm just gonna slide him to the right. Now he's fully inside the frame and it works perfectly. However, if I was doing something like I mentioned before where I want multiple clips, so now I have him on the left and I'm just gonna position him there and I wanna make maybe like a versus showing him going against someone else. But if I was to put another clip under the layer, we're not gonna see anything because the adjustment layer is affecting everything below. So this is actually a case where we don't want to use an adjustment layer, so I'll delete that. We still don't wanna use the full length of the clip, so we're gonna use our own selects. So if I make this the same, what we'll now do is right click and create a compound clip. Now we still have access to edit this clip however we want, but on this timeline, it's its own clip. So I can't make this any longer, can make it shorter, but even though the clip is longer, I no longer have access to that on this timeline. To get access to that, I'd have to open up in a separate timeline, and then I can manipulate this however I want. But now when I put this frame onto this clip, you're gonna see it goes in perfectly. So I'll do the same with the clip below. And there we have both frames coming through. Now to level this up even more, I'm first gonna bring it up a layer so we can use one of the backgrounds, just so when it does come in, we don't have the black screen. I'd prefer having a little bit of interest in the background. So I'm gonna put this background on and you can see it's still a black screen. So once I fix that quality, I'm actually gonna take out the animations for the background. I will also just take, turn off that grain so we do have smooth playback. And now you can see that looks a whole lot better. And then the real ice on the cake is still being inside this titles page. I'm gonna grab the versus title now, apply that to the top. And just like that, we have a perfect head to head sequence. 
Now I'll move on to freeze frames, and this is probably the most difficult part of the pack, but don't worry, we're gonna go through it slowly. This is an effect where you can add a freeze frame to an isolated subject so it sticks out from the background, giving it this cool comic book effect where something is really being highlighted. So the first thing we're gonna do is find the frame that we want to freeze. So from here, you're gonna click on the clip and hit Command R, or Control R front of Windows, or if this isn't what your keyboard shortcut is set up to, you can just right click and go to the read time controls. Then you're gonna click this arrow next to the 100% and go to freeze frame. We now see this red section at 0%. So you can see as I scrub through, as soon as we go to that red section, the frame completely pauses. So drag along this tab for however long you want that freeze frame to be. So currently it starts at 314. Let's make it a full three seconds. So I'll go to 614. Now what I like to do from here is actually put markers at those start and end points. This will just help us out later on. I'll now close those retime tools. Nope, not the retimes curve. Just get rid of that. Next, we're going to add the adjustment layer on. So I'll just close this, go to the effects tab and add an adjustment layer. From here, you only want the adjustment layer to be the length of time that your frame is frozen. So because we have those markers, this makes it really easy where we can snap exactly to those markers and get rid of the rest. From here is where we'll then drag on the freeze frame effect. So I'll do that here, turn on the 4K quality and you can see in the top right, it says separate the foreground in the fusion page. In the future, I'm sure we'll find a simpler workflow, but currently with the way DaVinci Resolve works, this is the best way to do it. So from here, we're gonna hit the magic mask button and it will take us into fusion. I'll just drag these into the middle. So we have three different nodes. We have the media in, which is our source here. We have the freeze frame node, which is the actual effect, and then the media out, the output. However, in this effect node, we can see we have this green triangle. That is an input ready for us to put our mask in. So the first thing to do is mask out our subject. So something I should have mentioned before, when you are using a freeze frame, to be able to get the best results, you do want to use a subject that is very easy to mask out. Otherwise, you're just making your life that much harder. So when it comes to masking out, if you don't have the studio version of Resolve, you can skip to this timestamp as you don't have the magic mask, so this will be pointless for you. But feel free to stay if you are planning on purchasing the studio version anytime soon. So first things first, I'm going to make a new node with the magic mask by holding shift spacebar. I'll get the magic mask, add that node in. From here, I'll take the output of media one and put that into the input of the magic mask. Then whilst the magic mask is selected, I'll hit one of my keyboards to get a preview on the left. Now here is where I'm gonna draw my mask around his head. Try and get in his hair. Oh, I just didn't release so early. Oh, well, fine. Got his mask. And now I have a bit of his hoodie that I don't want. So if you're on a Mac, hold option. If you're on Windows, hold alt. And you can just draw the red line over what you don't want to be included. So I'll do everything but his face and the mic. Done, cool. From here, we'll then go and track that frame. Shouldn't take too long considering it is a frozen frame, so just let that go through so you have a smoother playback. Then from here, we'll drag the output of this magic mask into the input of the effect, and that's it. You can see if I come to the middle of this, his face is there floating. Now, if I go back into the inspector tab, we can see the effect works perfectly. And then feel free to dial in how you actually want this to look once the effect is in play. Now, if you have the studio version, you can skip to this timestamp. Now, the first that comes to your head may think, let me drag in a polygon, you know, zoom into my subject and start drawing some lines to mask him out. And this reiterates my point where the simpler the subject is, the easier it'll be to mask it out. Now, this is all well and good, you know, taking your time going through and creating the mask. But if you mask out that subject and attach it to the freeze frame, you're going to see his face disappears. And if we invert that, the background disappears. And that's not exactly what we want. So instead, once you've made your selection with the polygon mask, I'm actually gonna add a new node where I will add a matte control, feed the media in into the input of that matte control. I'm gonna right click and hold the output of the polygon control and place that to the matte control one, change that to garbage matte. Then I'll drag the matte control output into the effect input and there we have the effect. Now, if I come into the middle of the layer where it's actually working, you can see that was a very rushed job on the magic mask, but it's okay, you get the idea. You then have all these controls so you can really dial in how you want that mask to look. Now, I know that was a little complicated, but I'm sure you did a great job following along and hopefully you understand how to use the freeze frames. The movements create a zoom or shake effect that you can dial in via the inspector. We have the background zoom that will actually zoom out the entire clip showing the background. You can make that a solid color or you can actually toggle off the background in the inspector tab and show other footage or one of the backgrounds in the title section. And of course, you can control the actual amount of zooming that's happening. Then the detail zoom works a little bit differently where you zoom into a particular area in the screen. Maybe it's to create dramatic effect when something happens in the game and you want to draw attention to the facial expressions. To move where the zoom's into, all you need to do is go to the movement controls and just dial in that X and Y axes. 
then getting onto the quake this just adds a shaking effect to the footage you know really giving that, that handheld raw look making it seem like the game is much more intense than it actually is now i think this is quite cool especially in this pack because it really does elevate your footage to make the viewer feel like they're actually experiencing the action just like you are and like always in the inspector tab you can dial in how strong and how that zoom looks moving on to the overlay effects now inside the effects tab similar to the overlay effects inside the titles pack this is again really simple to use you just drag on your effect and that's it maybe you're using this ban effect to make it look like someone's just lost in the game or add in this pixelate effect which is great if you're creating an intro sequence you want to put a title on it creates like a futuristic gamer look so play around with these dial in your settings to the inspector and i guarantee you'll get some great results I'd still recommend, however, to use these on adjustment clips, that way you have no issues with the timing and you can actually have this effect over multiple clips. And the last section we have are the placeholders. Similar to the frames where your footage gets put into different sections, but this pairs your footage with different titles or other footage. So for example, this first one, M Gaming Comparison, what this is going to do is show one clip in the first side and another clip in the second. Right now it's not doing that because we've only applied it to one clip and this is actually built for a fusion clip of two sources. So if I delete this, add in my second source, highlight them both, right click, new fusion clip. And now when I drag on this effect, we're going to see it goes from the first clip we had into that second clip. Then here we can dial in the look. So say we don't want to have as much of a height mask, we can dial it in so we can remove that up so we can fill the screen. And that's how simple it is. So I'll go ahead and delete the fusion clip and have the original clip back. And this is a case where I'd say to play around and get creative. For example, we can see he's here in a gaming competition and now we're going to put some of the gaming profiles. So what I'll do is put this placeholder onto him here. We have Duke Healer. So whilst I have him in the bottom corner showing his angle, maybe you want to do this for a live stream or something. You can then put some gameplay footage under this placeholder, adds on a little drop shadow so it's a bit more visible. And now you have a cool sequence where you can see the streamer, their stats and what they're playing. And lastly, to finish off, we have the transitions. These are pretty easy to use where you'll drag and drop the transitions between the clips, adjust the length of it by dragging this box here, then the transition will automatically adjust that length of time. And just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune and adjust the look of these inside the inspector tab until you have your desired result. <laughs> So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use M Gaming. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down in the comments below or head to our website at motionvfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your M Gaming DaVinci Resolve overview. See you in the next one.